So this is Moog Spectrovox. As of the making of this video, it's not commercially available and it may never be. I built it at Moogfest's 2019 engineering workshop. If you want to see what it's like to attend this workshop, I made a whole video about the experience last year building the Subharmonicon. This experience was very similar, except this time I didn't mess up, and the 30 instrument patch was even cooler. I'll show you that at the end of this video. So what is Spectrovox? To call it a vocoder would be to miss out on quite a lot of synthy things it can do. It's a single oscillator semi-modular synth with a bank of 10 resonant filters with spectral shifting and modulation. Now, don't worry, I'll explain all that. And indeed, on the vocoding side, it's a 10-band analog vocoder with a few interesting twists like a hold function. But before we get to the vocoding part, which is a little bit hard to understand, let's take a look at the synth side of Spectrovox and the panel layout. On the synth side, you have one oscillator, which can be either a sawtooth or pulse with variable pulse width. And pulse width can be modulated through the patch bay. Spectrovox also has an internal noise generator, which can be mixed with the main oscillator. And you can control the oscillator frequency either with a frequency knob or with voltage coming in through the patch bay. Next up, like in regular synths, is the filter, only you have a bank of 10 of them. Eight bandpass filters in the middle, and then a low-pass and high-pass filter on either end. Now, to understand what a filter bank sounds like, I'll lower the level of all the filters except the simple low-pass filter at the end. And you can see this behaves like any old resonant low-pass filter. This is a 12 dB per octave state variable filter. So cranking up the resonance doesn't attenuate the bottom end. I left a few of the filters a little bit up on the bottom end so you can hear the formant character of having more than one filter sweep. But I can turn them down. The filters don't self-oscillate, but they'll sing if you give them harmonics to latch onto. Now the interesting part, of course, happens when you start adding the bandpass filters. Resonance obviously matters a lot here. If I take it out, the effect will be substantially less pronounced. Of course, they don't all need to be up. So this bank of filters sets Spectrovox apart quite a bit as a synth, even before we get to the vocoder features. All ten filters move together, and they have their own dedicated LFO with depth and rate controls that goes all the way into audio rates. We talked about the oscillator and the filters, let's talk about the VCA and the envelope generator. You can either have the VCA open all the time in on mode, or have it be controlled by the envelope generator, which when triggered is a simple one stage decay envelope. The trigger for the envelope generator can come either from this button, from a trigger in the patch bay or from 
the program input, which is audio coming in through here or through one of the inputs in the XLR combo jack. If I turn program trigger on, then noises coming in through here will trigger the envelope and you can set different um, gain levels for the input. Let's shut this off just for a second. Now the envelope uh, generator works whether or not the VCA is connected to it. So I could, for example, patch the envelope generator to the shift CV of the filters and then make things like this happen. And if I turn on the VCA, it'll just keep going and make that happen. Which is pretty nice, right? Now, the last non-vocoder feature I'll talk about, even though it is related to the vocoder, is the hiss and buzz switch. Like I mentioned before, the carrier mix knob controls the relative level between the VCO, or whatever's coming in through the carrier input, and the noise generator. But if I turn on hiss, then noise will be sent to bands 9 and 10, regardless of the position of this knob. This was designed to make consonants more legible when you use this as a vocoder, which is a good segue to talking about the vocoder mode in Spectrovox. Now, to better understand how vocoders work, it might help to think about how we speak. If you think of our vocal cords, they're a simple monophonic oscillator with pitch control, occasionally paraphonic with falsetto, that is then passed through our head, skull, mouth, and nose, which act sort of like a filter. Our lungs can be considered the VCA in this analogy, which really is the only time you should put a VCA before the oscillator. Now, if we stretch this analogy a little bit further, vocoders are cool because they let you chop the head off the neck, and either part will work just fine standalone or with body parts of other synths together using the patch bay. In this increasingly gruesome analogy, the program input is the head or mouth and so on, and the carrier is the neck or the oscillator. Now, even though we're used to having robots, which are generally digital, speak in vocoderish and say things like, they were invented in 1939 by Homer Dudley, and Spectrovox uses pretty much the same design. Vocoders work by using two sets of filters. The first set uses bandpass filters at specific frequencies to split up incoming audio into different frequency bands, typically based on the frequencies of formants or vowel types, though vocoders can do pretty cool things with any type of audio, like beats, for example, as we'll see later. This incoming audio that's being processed is called the modulator or program in Spectrovox, which can come in through the combo XLR input or the patch bay, as I mentioned before. Let's continue looking at what happens when audio comes in. Each of these bandpass filters are sent to an envelope follower, one per band. This greatly simplifies the audio coming in to a single amplitude envelope for each range of frequencies that a single bandpass filter represents. Now, these envelope followers, which remember, follow the original bandpass filters processing the program or modulator audio, are then applied to an additional set of filters, controlled here, which are then applied to process incoming audio through the carrier or the internal oscillator of Spectrovox. So when we process the internal oscillator, it sounds like this. And the example that I played in the beginning of this video took a polyphonic synth, which is controlled using this keyboard. So even though Spectrovox is a monosynth, you can send in polyphonic audio through the carrier input and speak over that to get... So if we go back to Spectrovox's oscillator, if you want your sound to be as legible as possible, you need to set it more or less at these settings. These are sort of the factory recommended defaults. Then I think this can be pretty legible. Now, as you mess with the parameters, Spectrovox will become less legible, but potentially a lot better. And uh, obviously you can get very creative with this, but it will be harder and harder to understand what's going on. Which brings me to another cool feature of Spectrovox, and that's this hold function. The idea is quite simple. It's like analog freeze. 
It takes whatever audio that was fed into each of the ten envelope followers, one per band, and samples and holds it, and then you can go ahead and do whatever you want with that. I wouldn't call this granular synthesis, but you are holding on to a particular moment of analysis, or vowel, and messing around with it. Let's take a quick look at the patch bay. It's quite small compared to other Moog synths in this form factor, but it does give you access to the important and vital features you might want to mess with, like swapping the program or the carrier, the LFO, pulse width control, filter frequency, and a bit more. Now let's try a few interesting patches. What I have here, by the way, is ES8. I'm at Moogfest now, so this is sort of my traveling uh, modular rack it's connected to vcv i've got something super simple here just voltage coming out of this output and i'm going to use it to lower the frequency of the main vco even more than what you can on the panel and all i need from vcv is just a little push of voltage and the bandpass filters can be made to ring quite nicely Now, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, you don't need to run voice through the program input. Beats work really nicely, and Blackbox has been sitting here patiently for that moment to come. Now, you may need to increase audio levels to Eurorack levels. I'm using SBG. You, need, uh, you can use this or another amplifier for that. And I'll plug in my good old synth chords for this. So now if I play a simple chord and then get this going, I can use a beat as a rhythmic modulator rather than my voice. And if you're good at beatboxing, that works too. Okay, so back to the engineering workshop. If you saw the video I made last year about the workshop experience, you'll know that Steve Dunnington from Moog who led the design of Spectrovox, has a nice ritual at the ending of the workshop with all 30 or so synths playing in unison. You're hearing the first unison piece in the background. Now, getting all Spectrovoxes in tune is one thing, but to get them to speak together, you need to string them all together in one mega patch. Yeah, okay. program out to program oh, yeah, right. okay, that's how We're gonna do the big chain. Program out. Oh boy, we hope this works. Okay, so this is the part where it's dangerous. Strangely. Yes. Here's the end. So that's Spectrovox from Moog. The trip to Moogfest and building this, by the way, was sponsored by my patrons on Patreon, who also get access to my book of electronic music ideas, tips, and tricks. So do consider joining. Hit like if this video was useful. Subscribe and click the bell if you want to see more. Thanks for watching. Awesome.